Aliens Explored is a podcast exploring famous and obscure cases of UFO sightings, alien abductions and other strange events from both a believing and a sceptical perspective whilst keeping an open mind. I'm Stu Jackson, a professional actor and amateur ufologist with a particular interest in the crop circle phenomenon. I'll be debating that otherworldly visitations are real. The truth is out there. And I'm Neil Kelly. I'm a professional actor as well and used to work for the military as an intelligence analyst. I'll be arguing from a more doubtful point of view. I mean, it's all a bit far-fetched, isn't it? On the 29th of December 1980, Betty Cash, Vicky Landrum and Vicky's seven-year-old grandson Colby were driving home to Dayton, Texas when they had a close encounter with a UFO. This left them with symptoms very similar to radiation burns. The most interesting part about this case is that they counted 23 helicopters who arrived and surrounded the UFO before they drove away. Join myself and Neil here on Aliens Explored as we discuss the Cash Landrum incident. Hello listeners and welcome back to Aliens Explored, your weekly look at or listen to (laughs) our opinions about otherworldly phenomena, UFOs and mysterious government shenanigans. Um, I'm one of your hosts, Neil Kelly. And I'm your other host, Stu Jackson. Um, And uh, we've got a good one this week, Stu. um, We're going to be talking about the Cash Landrum incident. Oh, it's nice um, to hear you saying it's a good one. So this this has particularly engaged you, has it? Um, it has some interesting interesting aspects to it. Uh, Cash Landrum, of course, is the names of the two of the people who were involved in this incident: Betty Cash, Vicky Landrum, um, Vicky's seven year old grandson Colby Landrum was also um, involved in this incident. But that's why it's called the Cash Landrum incident, which happened on the evening of December the twenty ninth, nineteen eighty. 41 years ago. Now this was um, this was an unusual encounter. Um, I don't know if um, I, I don't know if this is this is listed as, as one of the um, the seven types of encounter, um, but this is one that uh, resulted in um, in a lawsuit. <laughs> yeah, you don't get yes, it's not in the classification. Is that the eighth kind where you sue the aliens <laughs> yeah. for, for damage to property? Um, it it is. That that is an interesting aspect to it because that implies that the last thing they were thinking was otherworldly. Um, yeah, it kind of does, doesn't it? But um, yeah, it, it was it was an unusual event. There was some suggestion that the military were involved in it, which they weren't able to prove because. Um, uh, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's 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 talk about what happened. The, the Betty Cash, Vicky Landrum, and her grandson Colby, v- Vicky's grandson Colby, were driving home to Dayton, Texas. That's under the uh, the UFO highway, isn't it? That's must be close. I think so. Yeah, um, I think so. Driving on an isolated road in dense woods, they saw a light above some trees. Initially, thought it was an aeroplane, and then a few miles later, on winding roads, they they saw that the, the light was still with them, mm-hmm. but now much closer and brighter. And they described it as a, a huge diamond-shaped object which hovered at about treetop level and that its base was expelling flame and emitting significant heat. I mean, we've heard mm. you were, descriptions of UFOs in that area before, haven't we? They look like a, a flaming ring or... Yes. Or whatever. So, um... Yes, and didn't, um... No, I'm... I'm do you remember Rudy Payen's story? Yes. Uh, didn't well, that, that was flames coming out the top, though, wasn't it? Um, if flame, I remember yes, that right. Yes, flames coming out the top. But uh, Yeah, but this was flames coming out the bottom, and it would sort of, the flames would stop, and it would drift down slightly. Then the flames oh. would start up again, and it would rise a bit. Kind of a bit like the opposite of a hot air balloon. Yeah. Oh, maybe exactly like a hot air balloon. I mean, if you're coming down a hot air balloon, and... Yeah, you think, oh, we're coming down a bit fast, I'll give it another blast of the 
the, the heater. Oh, is that how it Slow works? my yeah. descent. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have my hot air balloon lights. <laughs> so no. I'm, and I, I can't figure out how the hell they work anyway. Um, but yeah, it's got that kind of aspect to it. But this was a dull metallic silver, this diamond-shaped craft. Um, yeah, but could it have been, you know, it was it was nine o'clock. It was nine o'clock at night, wasn't it? Yeah, nine mm. o'clock at night. It could have been a hot air balloon with a diamond-shaped logo on it. Um, a black balloon with, had... a, with, a, with a silver diamond shape. Blue they... lights on it. Yeah, that could you could have and, that on a And balloon. a hot air balloon, you're not going to get that much heat coming off it. No, that's, that's, I mean, where, that's where my theory falls down. Yeah, you, you wouldn't feel the heat from a hot air balloon unless no. you were pretty close. But it, it wouldn't just... I mean, just to, to expand a little bit on your theory there, though, uh, it wouldn't just have to have a logo on it. It could be in the shape of a diamond. Um, you get hot air balloons in all weird and wonderful shapes. You do. Um, I yeah. used to live in Bristol, and every year they have uh, the what they call the Bristol Balloon Fiesta, hmm. uh, where you get hundreds and hundreds of hot air balloons uh, all on the same day, on the same night. At, at dusk, they have what they call the glow. So all these hmm. hot air balloons, they're all sat on the ground, and they all fire their fiery things mm. at the same time and just makes the whole skyline glow uh it's a beautiful sight but yeah you get some really weird shapes so a uh, diamond shape wouldn't be too difficult at all no but, but it's the uh, heat. Say, expelling significant heat yeah um that it was so hot that um um it was it betty who got out of her car to because they they, they stopped the car they wanted to turn around, but the road was quite narrow, and they feared that if they tried to turn around, they would end up off the road and stuck in in in, in the mud. So I they think just it had stopped. been raining, so yeah, yeah the verges were soft. Mm. Yeah, um, the the verges were soft, um, and it was um, it, yeah, it was Betty Cash. Who is it? Betty? Am I getting this right? Yeah, Betty Cash. Betty Cash. Yeah. Betty Cash stayed outside. Um, when she went back to her car. Um, the car was too hot to touch. Mm. She had to use something to pick, you know, to open the door handle, and then the the plastic dashboard was so soft that um, she said that it, her hand left an impression in it because of the heat. Although no one took a picture of that, of her handprint on the dashboard, which is unfortunate. But Betty had an interesting reaction to. Uh, encountering this thing she didn't think oh it's a ufo or it's aliens or anything like that um she thought it was the second coming of jesus um much like much like the citizens of nuremberg over 400 <laughs> we years we discussed <laughs> last week yeah, yeah. yeah you will interpret it according to your your understanding of the universe yes she mm. um and and she told she told um young colby that's jesus he will not hurt us yeah, yeah. When they when they expressed fear and concern, Vicky and Colby. Yeah, mm. just, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So she was quite brave, and she got the closest to this thing out of all of them. Mm. Uh, as a result, which um, yeah, um, then it rose up, didn't it? it yeah, rose and, up into the sky, and at that point, some helicopters appeared. Twenty three. 23 Chinook helicopters. Now, uh, they weren't all Chinooks. Uh, there were some Chinooks amongst them. Oh, I identified some of them as you know, yeah, the tandem rotor um, Boeing CH-47 Chinooks. But, yeah. Um, but, yeah, 23 helicopters surrounded this thing. But at this point, it was way above the roadway, so they felt they could mm. drive on and did. That's yeah. a hell of a story, isn't it? It's a hell of a story. So, who else would have twenty three helicopters going to going to intercept this? And, and why helicopters? Why why would a fleet of helicopters go? I mean, one thing we well, know about the, these UFOs is that they can, you know, if they when they when they are seen, is that they can go very very fast. You know, why, why are you sending a transport helicopter after it, or several transport helicopters that aren't really known for being very manoeuvrable? Exactly. Well, they're more manoeuvrable than a plane in that they can stay static in one place. They can, but they couldn't give chase to a fast aircraft or fast UFO. 
No, but given the speed of some of these UFOs, neither can our fastest jets. No, but 23 helicopters. That's very, yeah, that's a lot. I don't have that many helicopters, do you? Who does have that many helicopters? Um, uh, the Queen? <laughs> I don't think... Maybe. She, unless you count all the ones in the military helicopters. That, that, is, what I'm, that is what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but who in Texas has that many helicopters? Well, it'll be you know, either the, the, the Air Force or the Air National Guard or the... I suppose the army, probably, uh, yeah. you know, it, all, flying helicopters is something that's done by all the all men in black. Of the services, the men in black. Were they black helicopters? Twenty-three of them chasing this this diamond-shaped object that was floating away in the sky. But they weren't chasing it; they surrounded it. Yeah. Which I mean, that's a lot of helicopters to be surrounding an item. Hmm. It's it's that's really interesting. But of course, I mean, they they drove off. Betty and Vicky, um, quite rightly too. I, yeah. I don't blame them for that. Um, but that's not where the story ends, though, is it? No. Um, and this is where it got a bit weird. Um, they they started to get sick, didn't they? They they it was did, that night. That night, um, mm. Betty Cash. Um, well, they they claimed that they suffered from nausea, vomiting, diarrhoea, generalised weakness, a burning sensation in their eyes as though they were suffering from sunburn. Mm. Um, Cash said her symptoms worsed, worsened with, with large painful blisters forming on the skin. Um, she was closer to the object, so... Yeah, well, she was the one who stood outside the car looking at it. Um, mm. When she was taken to the hospital emergency room a few days later, January the 3rd, she could not walk and had lost large patches of skin and clumps of hair. Um, she was mm. released after 12 days, although her condition was not much better. And she returned to the hospital for another 15 days. Um, she claimed she was treated for cancer after being exposed to radiation. Yes, but it's not just her that's got these symptoms. Uh, Vicky and Colby do to a lesser degree. Yeah, they stayed in the car, didn't they? They suffered you know, skin sores, hair loss, lingering weakness. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that that's quite compelling. If it was just Betty, you could mm. say, well, maybe there was a previous health condition or something like that. But all three of them, admittedly not to the same degree, but, you know, that's that mm. makes it quite compelling, I think. Now, they, they all lived for years after the incident. They lived what you might mm. say was a, a natural lifespan. Yes. Um, so... Uh, Someone has suggested a, a chap called Brad Sparks has has suggested it, it seems to be some they, they're affected by some kind of chemical contamination. Well, that would make some sense because if it was because uh, the instant reaction, especially with hair falling out and you know hmm. patches of skin coming off, um, the the instant thought is oh they've been close to some form of ionizing radiation. Hmm. Um, that that would be the instant thing, but f to make them ill that quickly would mean it's such a high dose that they'd be dead within days. Yeah. So, it's clearly not ionising radiation, or I mean, it's some form of radiation that we're unfamiliar with. I mean, in those days, were they spraying crops with the kind of thing that that might make you that ill that quickly? Oh gosh, uh, 80s. Um, do you know what I'm thinking? Agent Orange. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably not what you, wanna, what you want to put you want to defoliate. That's probably not what you want to no, spray no, on but, your crops. <laughs> but that did pop into my head when you mm. were saying that. Um, yeah, it, it's it's feasible. I mean, certainly we've become more stringent in the last forty odd years mm. uh, about what goes on crops than we were then. Now, those helicopters were seen by other people. A Dayton police officer, Detective Lamar Walker, and his wife claimed to have seen 12 Chinook, didn't say Chinooks, but 12 Chinook-type helicopters. Mm -hmm. That's with the, you know, the two, two sets of rotors. Um, in yeah. the same area, around that same time, but they didn't report seeing the large diamond-shaped object. Okay, so if the Chinooks were either on their way or to or from... Mm. That that sounds reasonable, and that you know if if we take 
police officers as credible witnesses, which I think in these cases we need to. I think it's very important that we do. Um, mm. Then, yeah, that that verifies part of the story, at least. Mm. Um, yeah, and it was it was that ill. Well, it was actually later illnesses, um, because they uh, they suffered from problems for years. Uh, Betty did develop cancer. Mm. Uh, she passed away nineteen years later. Um, to the to the day. She died on December the 29th. Yeah, I'm not going to read anything significant into a calendar date. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's... It's it's an interesting... It's interesting, yeah. Slightly morbid fact. Um, But yeah, and... uh, I know Vicky um, had a cataract in one eye that she attributed to this event. Um, And that's what the lawsuit was about, wasn't it? Um, well, yeah, because they, they approached their senators, um, Lloyd Benson and John Tower, and they suggested that they file a complaint with the uh, Judge Advocate Claims Office at Bergstrom Air Force Base um, for to seek financial compensation for their injuries. They, they, they sued the US federal government for $20 million, so that spent a long way winding its way through the, the American courts. Mm. And the uh, the yeah, lawyer that represented them did it on a pro bono basis. Peter Gersten, yes. yes. And now I understand all sorts of um, debunkers became involved. The government would call it Philip Philip J. Our Class. Um, our friend Philip J. <laughs> Class was called in. Um, <laughs> they cancelled all leave for the official debunkers. I expect he came hurrying along with his um, with his lie detector or his. <laughs> <laughs> He which just, isn't a lie detector, which is no. a, a polygraph, but yeah, yeah, it's a lie detector. It's not a lie detector. Yeah, well, it, it is as far as everyone's concerned. Um, well, we need to address this and tell people it's not a lie detector. Now, Landrum appeared on a, a TV show called That's Incredible, where mm. she was hypnotised in front of a studio audience and recounted the, the incident under hypnosis. Um. They both appeared on a in 1989 on another television show called UFO Cover Up Question Mark Live, hosted by Mike Farrell, where they related their account again and their subsequent medical problems and legal batters, battles. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and it's it's had several other, it's had a fair amount of coverage on on television. It ha- it hasn't, but here's the interesting thing: people don't talk about this incident very much. No, it's not out there. You know, it's not like your Travis Waltons and what have you. But it seems to have rather like us gone off on a tangent. This this case, because where the where their their case fell apart was that their investigators could find no evidence linking the helicopters with any branch of the military. Because that's, I think basically they said, well, you know, we've been injured by whatever it was, and rather than go down the rabbit hole and say, you know, is it UFOs or is it not, there were a lot of helicopters in the sky, and we became ill. There was something generating a great source of heat, lots mm. of helicopters, which you know, we assume they're military, because who else has 23 helicopters, including 12 Chinooks, that they can they can put up into the sky to, uh, to deal with one thing? I mean, apart from the military... And well, the government. Who else? You know, do do oil companies have that many helicopters on hand? And would they would they send them in to deal with something like that? Well, it's, but yeah, uh, they, they, they yeah. It, oh, go on. Yeah, I say they just couldn't find any link between those helicopters and the military. They couldn't prove it. That's where their course case fell down. Well, no, Betty and Vicky did. Um, I mean, here's where it gets a bit tricky because mm. their story started saying, oh, well, I'm sure I saw Air Force on the side of some... Mm. Um, I mean, there could be Air Force helicopters without it having Air Force on the side. But yeah, that's that's the ultimate thing. Is the judge basically said, well, prove that they're the Air Force, and, and they couldn't. Mm. Uh, and that's why a, a, a lawsuit is always going to fall down very, very quickly. You'd have to prove responsibility. 
And how, how can you possibly prove responsibility on something like that? And if it's a cover-up, especially. Mm, unless there are records that are, that are open, and of course the military do all sorts of things. Yeah. that Even if it's um, hidden records, then yeah, you're mm. not going to get... But nothing that they could get access to. So that, yes, they, we no. had 23 helicopters in the sky at that time. No, um, it's, that's, it's, it's a difficult one. Now, um, Philip J. Class, who's described himself as a journalist and UFO sceptic, um, commented on it a long time afterwards. This was 1998. Um, he, he was talking about um, Schlüssler, um, who was a, a NASA aerospace engineer who had a, a long interest in UFOs, who'd had this conversation with, with Vicky Landrum. Um, but Class said that when Schlüssler Schussler inspected Betty's car in early 1981 and used a Geiger counter to check for radioactivity. He found none. Um, presumably, I mean, there was no he, no record that he found any abnormal radiation at the site of the incidents. And Schussler also provided no medical data on Betty's health prior to the UFO incident mm. or, the, or the prior health of Vicky or Colby. That's yeah. That's the difficulty. You don't have mm. a baseline. However, you know, if you're going to have a UFO encounter in a week's time, would you think to get a medical checkup like this week, <laughs> just to so you've got a baseline comparison? No, but I mean, we've got <laughs> medical. I mean, I'm, I'm under. I'm kept under quite close medical supervision. So yeah, I, I you know, someone could produce my medical records and say, look, here, this is what he was like. A month or two ago, that you know, it's, it's probably never going to be much longer than that. But since me seeing a medical professional, um, <laughs> he seems well, so, fine then. Same here, but I'm trying to think when the last time they checked for any tumours was. Hmm. And I don't think I've ever been checked for any tumours. Well, there would there would have to be some cause for concern wouldn't they? exactly you'd have to ask for it so so saying oh look we've got no well of course you wouldn't have um, mm. and also you know if, if you're someone who lives in a country where you, you for one um health care isn't free at the point of use it's mm. something that's that can be very very expensive mm. and and you're not being treated for some kind of long-term condition then yeah it could be a very long time since you've seen a doctor for anything yeah so, yeah, I, I mean, I do understand the point that um, it is difficult to sort of verify medical issues mm. resulting from a UFO encounter, but, but at the same time, I don't see that as a reason for debunking it either. Mm. But what, what I find interesting is, right, you can say whatever you want about the, the, the UFO, whatever it might have been, but it's the helicopters. I mean, that's that... The, the fact that there was some, there's suddenly this fleet of helicopters in the sky um, and, and no one knows where they came from. No one will admit that they, they were theirs. No. And it's a, like you say, it's a lot of helicopters. Yeah. I mean, 23, including Chinooks, mm. that suggests... I mean, it suggests Air Force, obviously. Mm. Um, but it also suggests that they sent all the helicopters they had available. Yeah. That's what that screams to me is just like everything, right? Any we can get a pilot into, mm. just send them out now. Well, yeah, if you're sending Chinooks, which are basically a transport aircraft, mm. you, you wouldn't send that to to chase something unless you really had nothing else, and or unless, as you say, yeah, you you just want to put everything you've got up in the sky. Well, you wouldn't send them to chase, but you would send to surround because you can't surround something with a jet. No, but they had other... I mean, it's it's looking like there were 23 helicopters, of which about half of them were Chinooks. Mm. Yep, yeah, but what I'm saying is, like, you know, if you've had a report of an object that mm. is stationary but airborne, mm. and you want to surround it, you are not going to send jets. You can only send helicopters to do a job like that. But uh, I would have thought 12 helicopters would be enough, wouldn't it? Oh, depends how seriously you're taking it. If it was if it was a major major incident, I would say send everything you've got. Yeah, twelve might be enough, but yeah. you'd want to be sure. 
It, it's just, it just seems funny they're using transport. So, something that's used yeah. for carrying heavy loads, primarily. Just might have been the only helicopters available, as yeah. uh, you know, alongside the others. Apart from the other dozen that they, they yeah. were able to yeah. scramble. Yeah, um, it, it's a bit odd. It's a bit odd that there, there were that type of helicopter involved in it, and that um, and that no one's admitting that they were theirs. There's no record of, well, which is what the you know the case fizzled out on. What, what seemed to be a solid case with, with with solid evidence of not extraterrestrial craft, but um, actions, you know, in, interactions with very firmly terrestrial craft, mm. which are. Yeah, it's hard to think who other than the government would have that kind of air force. Um, that, that, yeah, but that they can't even prove that, and 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 the, the you know, and and they've 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 met quite a hostile reception when they've tried mm. to probe it. Yeah, it's been denied, 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 discredit. Call in Philip J. Class because we who we're, <laughs> we're really bringing out the big guns on you. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's uh, that's probably a good place for us to uh, go to our summary, uh, hmm. I think. Um, so, I mean, there are definitely questionable elements to this story. Hmm. Um, but overall, do you think this was another worldly encounter, Neil? I don't know. I mean, what they saw initially, this, this diamond-shaped thing in the sky... Uh, right, it probably wasn't a hot air balloon, but it could have been. It could have been extraterrestrial, or it could have been some kind of experimental craft. Mm. But but what's what's interesting about this is that there's clear evidence of involvement of terrestrial craft who went up and surrounded it that that's just been denied. So mm. there's an awful lot of you know the, the government's up to something and they're not telling us. You know, it's just a dead ends denials and even official deviousness. Yes, I, th- I think, I mean, you and I, I think, are on the same page with this one. Um, I can mm. definitely see the possibility of this being a man-made construction. Mm. Um, you know, maybe a sort of man-made UFO. Um, or, you know, maybe reverse-engineered from Area 52. Mm. I can see that. Um, maybe it got out of control, maybe... It, sort of wandered off from where it's supposed to be and that would explain why the helicopters came in and surrounded it because mm. they would want to um, certainly hide it from view and I, I think a mm. genuine UFO would just be boom, gone off uh, maybe uh, the, the craft have got into some kind of trouble and that's why you need Chinooks because if it comes down and there's a lot of wreckage well yeah <laughs> Chinooks are the perfect aircraft to load the wreckage into and, and the dead bodies and, and whatever else or anything else you want to take away from the scene. Yeah, 12 Chinooks will, will shift a hell of a lot of stuff. That's a good point. But what I'm thinking more is like to, if you want to physically hide this thing from view by surrounding it with helicopters, if you've only got 12, I don't know, Apaches and 12 hmm. Chinooks, you would still send out all your helicopters. <laughs> it, really? Is that, I mean, is that what they were trying to do to to try and I'm, I'm speculating. hide it? <laughs> so there's this UFO specul- there. Let's just send out a swarm of aircraft to, so that people can't see it. Um, I don't. I don't. Pure I speculation. Yeah, I can't think that that would be the reason for doing that. Um, it, it's either to either to escort it or to pick up the pieces. If it comes down, or to have lots of lot, if it comes down somewhere, this thing that they're experimenting with, you've got lots of boots on the ground and lots of fast transport capability to remove all the evidence. There's there's lots of theories there, um, mm. definitely. But it, I'm but inclined. It also show, sorry, I, I was going to say I'm inclined to think uh, where Betty and Vicky are concerned, though, that they have it embellished their story as time go has gone on and um, possibly with the bit of media attention they've got and quite probably of course with a, a lawsuit as well um pending um i think they've had a genuine encounter with something mm. but it's yeah it's become embellished over time that that always makes it difficult to sift out fact from fiction yeah, and our chap called Brian do Dunning, who, who investigated the case, said that's a completely normal thing to do in the American courts. 
um, that if you honestly blame your health problems on whatever you saw, um, then you're, you're perfectly justified in pushing the truth a bit to get the Air Force to pay for it because they're going to push the truth a bit to, to not pay for it. Mm. That you don't necessarily feel it's wrong to exaggerate evidence, which is, I would say, is dodgy legal ground because if, you're, if you've got a claim against someone, as soon as they can show that something you've said isn't true, oh, yeah. you're, it blows you out of the water. I yeah, think. you lo- lose all your credibility. I'm, I'm thinking more uh, as much the, the media attention, though. You know, you want to tell an interesting story if you're being called up to talk mm. about something. So, you know, the story might get more interesting with each telling. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've all seen cases of that, I think. Um, but what do you think, listeners? Is the cash line drum incident uh, an absolutely genuine one? And were Betty and Vicky just the unfortunate uh, victims of uh, an encounter? Or is there something different to the story? Do write in and tell us what you think. You can find us in the usual places facebook and twitter by searching aliens explored or you can email us at aliens explored at gmail.com uh, and i would ask you just to take a moment as well um wherever you listen to your podcast and we're you know, we're glad to have you listening uh, do leave us a quick review uh it really does help other people to find podcasts like ours and, and reviews are the lifeblood for them so uh, that'd be very much appreciated if you can just take a moment to do that wherever you listen to your podcasts well that's it for this week uh join us next time when well neil you'll like this one we're well, going to be talking about man-made ufos man-made ufos right. yeah so not otherworldly these are definitely definitely of terrestrial origin uh, so we'll be discussing those so don't miss that one listeners fantastic in the meantime Amazing. keep watching the tree line the any strange lights and the skies and, and the courts and the campus <laughs> watch everything <Yeah. laughs> take care see you, see you next time bye bye Aliens Explored is a Fecal Films production in association with Juicy Falls. Music by Darren Mafucci and editing by Stu Jackson. Find us on Twitter or Facebook by searching Aliens Explored or visit us on aliensexplored.com.